today I'm making a cover for my whole mixer stand. You'll recall that recently we did a cover just for the bowl itself. And I'm doing this partially for viewer and partially because I've done it before and I thought it would make a cute tutorial. You'll see with this chili pepper one that I just used one fabric with a different fabric for the binding and for the little handle that you use to lift it up. Anyway, um, today what I'm doing is I'm making one out of some little scraps that I have and I just pieced these together as efficiently and quickly as I could and I decided to cut straight along here but these lines are not at all straight and I'm going to quilt all that. It's about 45 inches wide and it is 15 inches tall. The batting is. My quilting is not quite as long or my piecing but uh, there's going to be a binding on the bottom so I'm going to go ahead and do that. So 15 by 45 and then this piece I'll put a pattern on the website of these ends with uh, the amount that you need to make this shape. But this is the top and <laughs> this is my recipe here. Um, and remember that if you use freezer paper for your pieces, you can actually iron it on and it makes cutting things, shapes like that out a lot easier. And that was mostly pulled off and it, it's been used before. But I also have, besides this top piece, which I thought with the way I'm going to quilt this would pull everything together and be really cute. So I have that top piece and then one piece of batting and then I have a smaller piece which I'll mark on the pattern and this is that Peltex. It's very stiff and it's a good uh, three quarters of an inch smaller around the sides. And then I have um, a backing which is the same as this backing. With a project like this everyone's going to want to do something different with their cover. If you have curtains and you have, can find matching fabric you might want to match that or match your colors or just do a fabric that you just love. All of that would be great. Um, or you can use up what you have around. Whatever works. You know you could make your cover very close to the cover, color of your wall if you didn't want it to pop out or your backsplash or you could make contrast and use your accent color in your kitchen. But everyone will want to do it differently so I'm doing it this way just using up some scraps because I have never done that and I thought it would be fun. And I just wanted to show you something really quick. My needle is a 14 which my needle almost always is. To really make the quilting show I'm going to use two threads in the top. So this tension looks good. This, this is more how I want the tension to look. See how you can see every stitch and they're they're pretty good. I'm, I'm okay with that. I am spray basted between my backing and my batting. It just and that spray base, the 505 that I like, is uh, repositionable and I just like it. Now I'm going to start near the middle but all I really want to do with this my plan is just to quilt lines that are uh, almost like contour quilting but just in these wavy lines that hopefully will kind of undulate and I don't want to have them be too regular but a little bit regular because my quilting is so uh, you know, it's sort of, it's sloppy. I mean, it's neat, but it's, these pieces are not rectangles, and there's no uh, attempt to match points. In fact, there's a couple places where they start to kind of match up, and I wish they didn't. But what I'm going to do is try to attach the edges as I go, but mainly just go back and forth. And I'm starting sort of near the middle, 
And so I'll sort of do one end and then go down and do the other end. I'm showing a lot of this quilting because I think that it really makes a difference and changes the whole character of this piece. And so ultimately I end up liking the piecing a lot, even though it's not exactly the type of thing that I would normally do. I just had these pieces and wanted to give it a try. I also wanted to take a moment to thank all the people who have been investing in the channel either by commenting or asking questions or by sending me pictures of your work. Um, I'm posting those on Facebook and we'll put them on the website later. I also want to thank people that have checked out my page on Patreon. So now I'm going to uh, quilt this part, but before I do, it's just so this doesn't slip out of place so that it gives me trouble later on, I am going to sew it down. And it may pucker, it's going to be on the inside of the piece, and it may end up puckering a little bit in some places before we're done, but I'm just going to smooth this on here really good. And then with my regular foot, I will uh, backstitch and just stitch around and I'm just going to leave my guide where it's at. Um, I'm not that concerned about it. This is not the best tension ever. It's kind of bad tension, but it's going to be on the inside of the piece, so I'm not going to take it out. Okay, so. That's only slightly incompetent tension. So, you know, I've quilted this before where you're not actually quilting around the things, but you're kind of sh shadow quilting them. And I think I'm going to do that because it looks so cute. Although, stipple quilting is easier and faster or meander quilting, but I'm not, I'm going to do lines. I really like to quilt based on my, my fabric and what I'm trying to do. And honestly, I didn't like, I didn't like the way this was looking at all. And I needed strong, noticeable quilting to overcome it a little bit. And I hope that I have. I also ended up designing this so that this favorite print could pull things together using both color and whimsy. So that's how that looks, which I think is pretty cute. And I think it's gonna look really cute if I could show them both at the same time. So now that I've got this all ready, um, I'm gonna make my piece so that it's more like 43. And the reason I had you make this is a little big is that things shift around a lot and sometimes you have a bad area on the end that you need to trim off and so make your piece now um, about 43 inches. Okay so now I'm just going to seam these together and I'm going to use a half inch seam allowance. I often use a traditional 5 8 but I'm going to use a half here. So pressing things open really makes, while you're sewing, really makes the difference in how things look. And uh, you want to do that before you sew across the seam whenever possible. And so I'm going to take this to my iron and I'm just going to blast this open like this so that that seam is nice and flat on the other side. But I'm not going to film it. I've pressed this open really well with steam and That'll be good. And then I have this piece here, which is all ready to go. And I think that's going to look really cute on top of my uh, mixer. And we want to go right sides together. So, and I'll probably want my seam. It really can go anywhere. You just need to pick a place. Because I'm going to kind of try to do my pinning in quadrants. Put right sides together and I want my, when you look at it, for my motorcycles to be like this. So this is my back. So I'm going to go right sides together with my 
seam. Okay, so seam goes to there. Alright. So I'm going to put one pin in there. And I'm going to sew this at half an inch. And so what you want when you're pinning a curve is for to be pinning and mating your fabric right about at that half inch point where the seam is going to go. So I'm going to match these two pins and I'll just keep one of them and I'm going to pin right there over to about the half inch point. And I'm going to do the first four pins like that. Matching them up. Pinning them down. Matching these up. Pinning it down. Okay. And then I'm going to pin in between. Every, in the straight parts I'm going to pin about it every inch and a half to two inches and I might go a little tiny bit closer where it's very curved. And this is really behaving pretty well for me. So I'm just going to pin that. Now I'm pinning so that I see my pins this side, but I'm actually going to sew it with these pins down on the machine. Okay, so kind of ease this, ease it and pin it. And during this stage, if you need to do a little bit of snipping, you can, but I usually can get away without it. I am going to trim this uh, curve so that it pushes out really nicely. I don't think I'll need to notch it, but if I do, I will. So now I'm going to pin this. And unlike the pot holder, this can be any number of pins. Ooh. <laughs> be careful. Okay. All right. So this is quite the stiff thing and those pins could really scratch you, so try not to do that. You can start anywhere. Okay, so I'm using a half inch seam allowance. About a two. More light on the subject. Alright. Might as well backstitch. The half inch is really to keep us away from that Timtex. You'll have to move your bulk as you go, especially if you have a bar like this to get underneath. Try not to sew any pins and try not to sew over any puckers. You should be able to work them out if you know they're there. Needle down is preferable. Okay, I have a little extra. So I'm trying to kind of manage it as I go. So I'm just going to trim this down to about a quarter or three-eighths of an inch. You know, you could finish this. I even considered, I thought this was pretty in my kitchen, I considered making it reversible but I decided not to, and so I didn't finish these. But you could bind all these. You could also do your inside so that it was a lining that got flipped in at the end. But I think for, I think I prefer a bound seam uh, for something that you reach inside of, like a purse, you know. A purse should not have these raw edges or a, cosmetic bag and we're going to do that soon. 
but for something like this where it's really one-sided I think it is okay to have it you could try to press this but I'm not sure this kind of a curve really presses unless you use a pressing implement not sure a ham would work but so when it's on the mixer it's actually the spine of the mixer that the back of the mixer that keeps this top up and I just tried it on I took a picture see if this if the picture is okay but it stands there just like this and this bottom is actually a little long so I'm just going to use my scissors and trim off about half an inch because the way we're going to bind this it's the same way we wrap the binding around when we do raw edge on other things so we'll sew it facing in and wrap it around the front and then stitch it and then trim it and so this will have a raw edge binding even though the rest of this is all pretty finished off and again, you don't have to make yours this funky. You can make yours with chili pepper fabric or cherries or roosters or any kind of cute thing, which is what would actually sell for the amount of time it takes. I actually really like that on there. set it on here with your seam on that end and you want to cut it so that it you can put a seam on this end it's just about just about that same half inch we've been doing so I'm going to sew and I'm going to pop my needle over because I think I need a little bit less all right so I'm just going to finger press these. And so we're going to put it with the, the right side of the binding to the wrong side of the piece. And then we're going to pin. We don't need that many pins. I had some nice big pieces of watercolor piecing that I thought about making one that was watercolor. That would be really pretty. I don't want this uh, seam very thick, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna stitch it like this. This is pretty close to a quarter. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna press this really flat. So what I did was I pressed this really flat all the way here. You know I repositioned it like this so that I could press through here and then I flipped this in like this and pressed it like that and I did that all the way around so that it's inclined to be in the right place when I do my stitching. Needle down as you go helps try to keep this tightened on here so that it's in the right place. Loosen up your shoulders. A few people have asked about how I pick uh, fabrics and I have probably got a lot to say on that topic and so look for that coming soon. In general uh, start with things that make you happy to look at them and build out from there. I think that if you're selling things, you get a real sense for the kinds of things that people will go for. And if you're doing kitchen prints or something, household fabrics, you also get a sense for what colors do better than others. The next thing we're going to do is cosmetic bags. I'm a week ahead of schedule right now, which is good because after Thanksgiving, there won't be anything uh, until after Christmas. Thanks.